is with us this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you me O Almighty God, merciful Father,
Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. to God on high. God, Heavenly Father, send forth your Son to lead home his bride, the Church, that with all the company of the redeemed, we may finally enter into his eternal wedding feast through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Appointed Old Testament reading from the book of Amos, the fifth chapter. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord. Why would you have the day of the Lord? It is darkness and not light, as if a man fled from a lion and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand against the wall and a serpent bit him. Is not the day of the Lord darkness and not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your feasts, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the peace offerings of your fattened animals, I will not look upon them. Take away from me the noise of your songs. To the melody of your harps I will not listen. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The word of our Lord. The epistle from the first letter to the Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. died and rose again, 
Even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of our Lord. St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a cry, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered saying, since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with the, him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of our Lord. We confess the common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit,
grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. From the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. And from the Gospel according to St. Luke, Therefore I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, for she loved much. But he who has been forgiven little has loved little. Have you ever found yourself in an awkward situation because you were not adequately prepared? Perhaps you wanted to paint a room in your home. You purchase the paint, some fresh brushes. You take the screwdriver and remove the wall plates and switch plates. You take down the pictures and patch all the little nail holes and dents. You cover the floor and the furniture with an old bedspread or drop cloth, and you're ready to paint. And then you pick up the roller. It's crusty, hard. It won't spin. It won't do the job. For years, the motto of the Boy Scouts has been, be prepared. And it's a good motto to follow in our everyday life, but also in our spiritual life. Today, as we near the end of the church year, we hear the parable of the ten virgins, and we're told about ten young women. There was a couple who was married. They already had the religious ceremony to declare their engagement, their commitment to one another, to spend their lives together. And the custom meant that they were legally bound together as husband and wife, even though they still lived separately with their own families. At a time, the father of the groom would say, you have enough to start your own household, meaning are there enough income or materials or perhaps even just common sense? Then weeks or months later, the groom would go to the bride's house and bring her to his own for them to live together in holy marriage as God intended. And the ceremony was celebrated in the evening in what we would normally call a wedding feast. The bride's attendants, her best friends, or bridesmaids waited eagerly for the groom to come. And this was before street lights. When they heard the groom was coming, they'd light their lamps and go out to meet the groom. Since the bridesmaids didn't know what time the groom would appear, they had to be ready for him whenever he came. In this case, he was delayed in getting there. The ten bridesmaids were there. They had their lamps. Five described as foolish and five described as wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, but no extra oil. And the wise ones, well, they were the ones prepared. They took extra jars, extra flasks of oil, and planned ahead. They had what they needed. And the foolish ones realized too late that they were not prepared. Frantically, they start looking for oil. Where would they find some? The first place, going to their friends to borrow the oil. And the five wise ones said, no, if we give you the oil, then we won't have any left for ourselves. Go to the oil store. Go to the merchants and get as much as you need, and they go to buy some. Now, remember, this was in the days before the 24-hour festival foods or Walmart, even though the last six months have not been 24 hours in either store. And yet, by the time they returned from buying the oil, the groom had arrived, 
he and his bride had already taken off. They had gone on to celebrate the feast. The foolish had arrived and were locked out. No way to get in. Failure to prepare, failure to plan ahead. Now what about you and me? Has lack of preparation cost something? We know there's value in preparation. Preparation of the mind and the heart before preparation in action. And when thinking of the things of heaven, when thinking of that day when Christ will return, we think about our time here on earth as well. And we think about what God has blessed us with. And it's the starting place of stewardship, preparation of the mind and the heart. Without preparing these two things, it's difficult to live as God-pleasing stewards in this life. Personal preparation of mind and heart, though, is a gift from God to encourage us to reach full stewardship, not only of our lives, but also our resources. In the Gospel according to St. Luke, we're told of a woman who was forgiven much. If you remember that episode that Luke reminds us of in the life of Jesus, a woman anoints Jesus' feet with oil. And not just any woman, that woman, or that kind of woman. It wasn't unusual for a stranger to come in off the street and walk into a home where a rabbi was teaching. Customary for uninvited guests to go into a home and listen to the conversation between the one who was teaching and the one who was learning. What was unusual is that this woman, that kind of woman, was a prostitute. And as she came into the setting, out of all the people gathered there, there was one, only one, who accepted her, only one who received her, only one who saw something different about her, and that one was Jesus. He saw something different, and he saw her differently and received her differently. Jesus, Son of Man, Son of God, sees her differently because as a Son of God, he could see that her heart was prepared. She had sinned much and was sorry for her sin and wanted to break away from her sinful life. And rather than standing back and judging her, knowing that she was that kind of woman, Jesus has compassion and forgives her much. And the woman responds extravagantly. The result of Jesus forgiving this woman is expressed through Christ-focused living and giving. The prostitute like you and me, confronted and conscious of her past and present. Remember how upset she was by her sinfulness? How distraught she was over her lifestyle? What she was doing, knowing how wrong it was? and then being received by the one who can only grant forgiveness, tears stream from her eyes. And not just a tear that trickles down the cheek, overwhelmed by not only sinfulness, but the grace that followed, recognizing it, aware of it, it was real. The tears falling on Jesus' feet were so much that his feet were dampened and she dried them with the locks of her hair. Simon, the host of the meal, didn't take time to take care of the responsibility. 
the responsibility for anyone coming into his home from the dusty pathways out on the streets. People would walk in the dust and dirt all day long, and when they come into a home, Simon should have had some water prepared for foot washing. Yet, he didn't do that. And the woman washed Jesus' feet with her tears. The forgiveness from Jesus changed her life. And then she takes her most precious material possession, perfumed ointment. And she takes it and pours it on her, his feet. Perfume that was a year's wages or more on the feet of the Savior. And the strength of the perfume must have overwhelmed the household. Heart and mind prepared, moving to action. Preparation of the mind and the heart is vital to stewardship. God has richly supplied each of us with skills, talents, resources, and abilities. And in preparation to meet the challenges of this world, we're called to develop them to the fullest. And in doing so, greater glory and honor is given to God by service to our neighbor and by our lives of stewardship. And we fulfill the calling when we use the gifts he has given us. In this life of uncertainty, we must always be prepared. Winston Churchill, during World War II, said, let our advanced worrying become advanced thinking and advanced planning. In truth, there's only one source of security. Only through Jesus are we adequately prepared. Only in him are we wise. Only through him are we prepared as our faith is nurtured in word and sacrament. In this unpredictable world, we need a source greater than ourselves. We need Jesus for all the problems that come. We trust in his endless supply his endless resources, his endless preparation of us to face this life, his unconditional love, his unwarranted forgiveness, his might, his strength, his endless goodness and mercy, his constant care and blessing prepare us to meet the challenges of life. And it also prepares us to meet our Lord when he comes again to take us to the heavenly home, that time when we will see Christ face to face, when we will meet him, and not just us, but also all who preceded us in the faith, when he comes to take us to our heavenly home. It's through Christ that mind and heart are prepared to serve him, it serves him in time. We will be reminded of that in a few moments as Lindsay is commissioned and installed, that God has equipped her with times and talents and abilities. Of time and talents and abilities and a compassion for young children. I am amazed as I go into that classroom, yes, that classroom, five and six-year-olds are wonderful. I don't know how she copes with them all day, every day. <laughs> I remember when my own children were that age and that prayer was uttered constantly by me. Lord, give me patience and give it to me right now. <laughs> God has granted her what she needs to continue to teach these precious little ones. And for that, we are thankful. And it is God, it is our Lord Jesus who has prepared her to meet the challenges 
and the joys of teaching these little ones. And for that, we are thankful. And as God has prepared her for a specific place of ministry within this congregation, to assist this congregation in reaching out with the gospel, to assist this congregation in fulfilling the plans of our forefathers and foremothers to have a Christian day school. She has been equipped to fulfill that role as teacher. And we have been equipped, equipped to provide the day school and in recent years, the child care. And the challenge for us ahead is advanced thinking and advanced planning, asking God to bless us with the school and child care that he has entrusted us with. Let our advanced thinking and advanced planning be blessed by our Lord, now in time and until he prepares us to be with him in eternity. Amen. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And now I ask Lindsay to come forward for the commissioning and installation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, Lindsay Meyer has been properly trained, elected, and called to serve as teacher of Emmanuel Lutheran Church, school, and child care. This office has been established in love by the church to support the office of the holy ministry and to assist and strengthen Christian fathers and mothers in their God-given responsibility to bring up their children in the nurture and instruction of the Lord. Hear the word of God concerning this office. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body, we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith, is, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Romans chapter 12, verses three through eight. And let, uh, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Colossians chapter 3, verses 15 through 17. Lindsay Meyer, I ask you before God in this congregation, do you believe and confess the canonical books of the Old and New Testaments to be the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule in, of faith and practice? Yes, I believe and confess the chronicle of scriptures to be the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice. Do you believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds, namely the Apostles, the Nicene, and the Athanasian creeds, as faithful testimonies to the truth of the Holy Scriptures? And do you reject all the errors which they condemn? Yes, I believe and confess the three as they are in accord with the word of God, I also reject all the errors they condemn. Do you confess the unaltered Augsburg Confession to be a true exposition of Holy Scripture, 
and a correct, correct exhibition of the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? And do you confess that the apology of the Augsburg Confession, the small and large catechisms of Martin Luther, the Schmalkald Articles, the treatise on the power and primacy of the Pope, and the formula of Concord, as these are contained in the Book of Concord, are also in agreement with this one scriptural faith. Yes, I make these confessions my own because they are in accord with the word of God. Do you solemnly promise faithfully to serve God's people in the teaching ministry in accordance with Holy Scripture and with these confessions? Yes, I promise with the help of God. Will you, trusting in God's care, seek to grow in love for those you serve, strive for excellence in your skills, and adorn the gospel of Jesus Christ with a godly life. I will, with the help of God. Okay, you can turn around and face the congregation. To you, brothers and sisters in Christ, I now ask. You have heard the confession and solemn promise of Lindsay Meyer who has been called to the office of teacher in the church. I ask you now in the presence of God, will you receive her, show her fitting love and honor, and support her by your gifts and fervent prayer? If so, answer, we will with the help of God. The almighty and most merciful God strengthen and assist you all, always. Are you ready and willing to assume the work of this office? I am. Lindsay Meyer, I commission you as a minister of the Church of Christ and install you as a teacher of Emmanuel Lutheran Church, School, and Child Care in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. Gracious and most merciful Lord, we thank you for providing faithful men and women in your church to assist and support the office of the holy ministry and its work among us. We ask your continued blessing of Lindsay as she serves here in this time. Grant your Holy Spirit to Lindsay. Adorn her with wisdom and power from on high. Incline both young and old to godliness and obedience. And let them so benefit by your instruction in your holy word that they may serve you all their days, and finally obtain eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lindsay, go in peace and joy. The Almighty and most merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, and bless and strengthen you for faithful service in his name. Amen.
Lord, you are our help and deliverer. And to you we bring the prayers and petitions of your people, that you may grant to us all things good and needful, and guard us against all things evil and harmful. That the Lord would rule over the darkness and shine his light over all the earth. That those from many nations may be united as one people through baptism, and live together in faith by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our that the Lord would grant us wisdom and courage, that we may be prepared at all times to receive him when he comes in his glory, and that we may not be distracted by earthly glories that fade away or disillusioned by earthly disappointments which will come to an end. Lord, in your mercy, that the Lord would give courage to all pastors as they preach and teach the word of the Lord, that all those who hear may believe, and that believing they may live in righteousness and godliness before the world, and be kept to the day when Christ returns as Lord and judge of all. Lord, in your mercy, that the governments of the world and our leaders would act justly and with mercy, that we may be spared war and violence, and that we may use wisely and for the Lord's glory his gift of liberty and the abundant blessings he has poured out on our land, that the results of our national and local elections are accepted by all, and that the Lord cause us to put away the sinful desire of partisanship and work for the benefit of our nation. That the Lord continue to bless our president and president-elect. Lord, in your mercy. That the Lord would give aid and comfort to the sick, the suffering, and those in their last days. That he may grant healing according to his will, and strength to bear up under the weight of loneliness or affliction. We pray especially for Teresa and Trish Backus, Joe Bauman, Carolyn Bonin, Brooke Delgoff, Doreen Fuller, Brad Haferman, Paul Hiles, Adele Klon, Violet Leonard, Dave Potapenko, Ursula Rhodes, Ron Rogers, Amy Rogenbauer, Lucille Schrader, and Shirley Seehafer. Lord, in your mercy. 
that we give thanks for all who have served in the military and retired from their time of service into civilian life, that we continue to give thanks to them day in and day out for the freedoms and liberty we enjoy, and that the Lord continue to bless them after their time of service. Lord, in your mercy. That we may find a home within the house of the Lord here on earth, that we may rejoice in the Lord's word and sacraments by which we are brought to faith and nurtured in this faith, that we may be sustained in the days of waiting, serving the Lord in anticipation of his return. Lord, in your mercy. That we may be ready to receive the Lord when he comes again in glory, that the Lord may open the hearts of those who have wandered away from the faith, and that the Lord may restore those caught up in error's maze. Lord, in your mercy. That the Lord may hear and answer the prayers of his people, that we may be content with his answer, trusting in his fatherly will and wisdom to grant us all that we need and all that will profit our salvation. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.